Things aren't easy in the year 2037. As far as the eye can see, crumbling structures stand as haunting reminders of a forgotten civilization. But when I'm stuck in a rut, not sure where my life is going, here's what I do. <laughs> That's right. I get jiggy with it. Well, Disney used a similar tactic in the 80s when it was trying to dance its way to a new audience. I give you Videopolis, Disneyland's dance club. A long time ago, in a theme park far, far away, the empire known as Disney fought to stay relevant. But Star Wars, a six-foot rodent, and even giant turkey legs weren't enough. Disney needed a mouse metropolis, or a video, or a... Videopolis. 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 So what is it called again? Videopolis was basically dance club at Disneyland. Let's get into trouble with the people! For, you know, all the cool people that hang out at Disneyland at night. Yep, a dance club for kids. What kind of trouble could your daughter possibly get into with a free weekend and the keys to your car? We drove all the way from so how did Mickey Mouse end up in the club? Disney was trying to appeal to an older crowd to move away from their family-friendly image. Well, what are we waiting for? I don't know. I have any kind of like suspicious activity when adults want to lure like teenagers into a like a room with a fog machine and like flashing lights. It's weird. But in 1984, Disney had fallen on hard times, so they brought in Michael Eisner, former CEO of Paramount Pictures, to help revamp the business. The story goes that Michael Eisner brought his son Breck to Disneyland one day, and he said it was super lame, basically. Baby Breck was super bored, but Daddy had a super duper idea. Disney's full of all kinds of weird hang around gimmicks, especially at the park, and I think Videopolis was a great example of that. With Eisner's green light, sweaty teens got to boogie down at Downtown Disney in record time. Videopolis opened on June 22nd, 1985. From development to opening, it took just about 100 days, which is breakneck speed for Disney. And it was a fast pass to success. Videopolis was so popular and eventually saw such acts as Oingo Boingo, the Bangles, New Kids on the Block. And while teenage fans were screaming with excitement, the Disney Channel was busy capitalizing on the Videopolis craze. They ultimately had two TV shows, one called Videopolis and a special called Videopolis Superstars. It was Soul Train. For the Disney Channel, AKA the No Soul Train. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. This sounds like a place I wanna go. Exactly, but Disney wasn't the only place in town to cut a rug. Disney basically ripped off their idea from Knott's Berry Farm, their local competitor, who in 1984 had opened an MTV-inspired outdoor club called Studio K. That was not very smart because a dance-off was the least of Disney's problems. In Orange County, gang violence between teenagers became a huge problem, and some of these gangs ended up considering both Disneyland and Knott's as part of their turf. Gang gangs. Yeah. And we're talking more Bloods Crips than Jets Sharks. So you had kids that were like, no, my park's Disney and my park's Knott's Berry? Is that what you're saying? Unfortunately, that's, that's exactly what we're saying. Of course they're starting gangs. They're like, ah, I wanna f so bad, but I can't. So let me go fight people from Knott's Berry Farms. Ultimately, although it happened on a night that Videopolis wasn't operating, two teens were shot and one of them died in the parking lot of Disneyland, and it was forever linked in the public consciousness with Videopolis that led to the demise. Although the incident wasn't entirely to blame, add that to the growing shift in music taste, and the park just couldn't keep up and decided to unplug the screens for good. Thank God it's gone. Although, for one night in 2020, for 80s night, they brought Videopolis back to the site where it used to be. We are happy to report no Gen Xers were harmed in the gathering. 